I just saw kinds of kindness with my husband and my mom. So they are special guests on this sacred storytelling podcast. So it might be a little chaotic, but here we go. So what did you guys think? I, what's really great is my mom is a boomer. She doesn't watch a lot of she odd. Being called a boomer. Uh, I just not watch a lot of odd Thank films. You. So she not saying that you're like lowbrow. I don't mean it like that. I think we're going to get a more average moviegoer perspective from you, mother, mom. So, well, let her rip. (laughs) Old people are going to say, what the heck is going on here? There's a whole lot of blood and a whole lot of weird crap. And not to mention, I always think about people sitting around a table saying, this is what we're going to do in this movie. And someone saying, yes, let's do that. (laughs) <laughs> I think you're crazy. <laughs> I think I, I I have to tell you though, it was interesting and I did enjoy watching it. I wouldn't watch it again because it you know, I'd have to have fava beans. <laughs> well, and thank goodness you had coffee because you definitely wouldn't have stayed awake for that oh, movie. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was interesting though. It was yeah. It was very Yorgos. Can you give a synopsis very of what it was. Um. I really liked it. I probably would watch it again because I like to connect all the little Easter eggs, Easter eggs and dots from each each short. Essentially, um, I like that. I like, you know, when I watch the first one and then the second one is like, oh, that wasn't the first one, and the third one's like, oh, that wasn't both of them, and just I, I have fun catching all those moments. Because it was three mini movies, just to be clear. There's, there's three shorts. Uh, each short had nothing to do with the other one except for. Uh, except for direction, style. Well, and all of the same so actors. All the, all the acting was very specific and very... The um, only way I can explain it is, is like flat almost, as if... It's, it's, like, it's like when an actor is intentionally acting, like doing bad acting. It's, it's, hard to, it's really hard to do that, but they were often doing that. And I, and I found that fascinating... As but did you find it? Choice. Did you find it good? But they were doing it badly on purpose. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, it was. It was. It was the. It was like the point of the three stories, and the point of the three movies is that there is no point, which is why I said it's very Coen Brothers. And Coen Brothers comedies, they almost always end with, well, that was pointless. Like, like it was like the whole movie was a colossal waste of time. Which you know, some so people in, could in argue the, that is life. In Big Lebowski. <laughs> They go, he goes on this ridiculous quest to find this kidnapped girl who was never actually kidnapped. And, and that same thing happened in the, some of the other uh, Coen Brothers comedies. And then, in, and that's why I also joke that it was very uh, Edgar Wright, because Edgar Wright did the Carnetto trilogy, the Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End. And each one of those movies is almost the exact same movie, just with different characters and, and a different uh, storyline. Uh, but the shots are the same, the, and uh, there's lots of moments that are exactly the same, and they, he did that intentionally. Um, well, I really, I'm really interested. So the whole in, movie in, felt like an homage to these other filmmakers, which I thought was really cool. I'm really interested in looking up some interviews with Yorgos and just kind of seeing his I'm inspiration curious, yeah, of like, he, uh, of like why he chose to do, like why didn't he just make three short films? Like why did he make it all into did, one? Yeah. But the three, all yeah, into they all, one they all inevitably thing. connect. Well, it's interesting. I actually felt like all three films, it was a very, let's put it this way. I enjoy weird films just because I enjoy seeing different things done. And I think everyone has the right to create any sort of film that they want, right? And I like things that make me confused and weirded out. And because so often movies don't, and so often movies are like Snorfest and like I forget them, right? But it was a, it definitely was a very film school type movie. Like I could, I like, pretentious film people will go see it and be like and notice all the things and want to talk about it but it's like the first short I feel like it was a comment about codependent relationships and like the extremeness of that and all of them were your I mean you're right maybe that was the whole like point like I one of the that's one of the things being literally controlled by another person Uh yeah and like the weirdness of the extreme of what that guy would go to and Mm -hmm. then but then like I thought it was so interesting the final short where it's like 
I par- literally was like, so she, it, it's like, it first presented it as like, oh, this poor husband and daughter that are being abandoned. And then her husband <laughs> date rapes her. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, so was that why she joined the cult or was literally this like pattern of how she is in her life what made her susceptible you to also, get in that marriage and be in this cult and had his daughter lied to her too about the ballet her foot, her foot was never hurt she you lied just to say, her. You just and saying I thought, it. I thought the whole thing with the that's another one someone's foot is always hurt people people being there Foot and is having hurt. their tears go into a car. Oh! He kicks his foot, hurts his foot. She comes home from being deserted on the island. Her feet are swollen. And then the third one... Well, maybe he, maybe he has a foot there. fetish like Quentin Tarantino. Well, not, I thought... That, I'm just kidding. Just, I thought that... Kidding. I really loved the conclusion of the second one. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Oh, like, it's like oh. he just trusted himself and yeah. she was a fucking alien? It was like Invasion <laughs> of the Body Snatchers. And, and yeah. he played into it, you know, of... He totally committed to trying to get... Yeah, cause because it's almost like he could tell she was a robot. And like, oh, is she literally just going to do whatever I he want? He didn't care whether that one died. Yeah. Because I'm thinking if he really loved his wife... If it really was his wife, she's like, I'm not going to cut off my never, fucking finger. Yeah, he yeah, would then, never do that. But why did he, why did he want to uh, lick the bullet wound from that guy? Yeah, that was really it's another weird. licking thing. But, I but had he been taking the medication go, thing? Look, we'll look at the licking thing. Yeah, All these, like, symbolism. The licking on the body, mm-hmm. of the, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the licking I got, the I got was that it was a reference to her dream about the dogs were all in control. And I think it just connects to that we're all, like, I think his commentary in that short was just, like, we're all dogs. And just as bad as dogs, I guess. Except and that the dogs, dogs will were lick, more civilized. Dogs will lick lick wounds like that that's how they heal wounds so he said i'm so sorry he started licking the guy's wound yeah it had some really interesting stuff i did really enjoy it i'm just saying if you're the cult one made me laugh the most i would watch it again if you're expecting to go and see like a driving miss daisy or something like that it ain't well, it. It's your ghost. Everyone knows what you got. Well, not necessarily. If you if you're just like I mean, no. Things, if if you now. think here's the thing though, if you this is what I I've actually been telling people a lot in a lot of my episodes. If you watch the trailer for this, which barely tells you anything, yeah. it's confusing and weird, and you don't know what's really going on. That is what the tone of this these films were. Yeah. Yeah. This overall yeah. film. So if you, you get, never actually know what's going. No on. one who wants to know beat for beat what the fuck's gonna happen is gonna go see this film. Yeah. It, they just won't. Yeah. They're going to go see the one where, like, the Despicable Me 4 or 5, where or, they show every single beat in the trailer. Or where the arc of the film is exactly the same as every other thing they've seen before. Yeah. I, you know, it was incredibly, like I said, if you have I loved the, to, oh, sorry. If I'm you have somebody who is uh, really adverse to seeing blood or anything like that. I had to shield my eyes a couple times. You should not go. <laughs> but the whole concept was really cool, and the irony of it was really cool. Work. I love the, there was so many shots and framing of certain shots that were really, really cool. He did a lot of these, like, establishing home wide shots where it's, like, you could see the person going in or you could see them in the far, like, distance, but then also, like, really close, like, the juxtaposition of, like, those kind of wide shots and then the really close shot of, him, like, him licking the wound or the really close shot of, of the meat the and cutting the meat yeah, and, like... Similar. There's also a resurrection. There's a, someone resurrects in each one. So the first one, he is dead to them because he refuses to do what he asked. But then he does it anyways and he comes back. And then the second one, uh, he, uh, her clone, whatever, alien dies and then she comes back. Oh, you're so Third right. Guy comes back to life. And what was she eating on the island? Was it the three people? When they showed that. The guys, Carly right? said it, it looked like it was she was eating some meat and guy's foot was yeah off. so she they were like off, so but they said three him. people died that were there so yeah, did I she think, eat I them i think they were alluding that that she ate these people yeah or like maybe she got kidnapped but anyway she had me believe that like she had gone insane because they, they say that's what happens if you if you've gotten so far you resort to eating people you've, you've essentially you've altered your state of mind 
So obviously you get, if you go see this movie, it's going to make your head spin. It's going to make you question things and you're going to have these kinds of conversations. So, well, and if you have you to see kind William Dafoe in some sexy clothes, though. Oh, yeah. William Dafoe in an orange Speedo. Oh, that was probably the only, I'm not this into, was very I'm not, filled, by the I'm way. not, I don't know if we oh, I do that in all my things. Um, I am not into body shaming people, but I will body shame that William Dafoe is really disgusting. He He's a really care. amazing actor, and it's really he hard. I would, that was probably the hardest part for me to watch, him kissing Emma Stone close yeah, up. Yeah, that, that made me that was, and that, I'm old. And mom well, definitely like, doesn't hide her, I was, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. The whole part, yeah, it, it, it was pretty crazy. But if you have, like, an AMC subscription, it's definitely worth picking up one of the three of the week. Just to go see it, and you don't want to leave. Uh, like this it, is Cindy leave. Panza here I'm with AMC A list <laughs> <laughs> spokesperson. <laughs> go spend it on one, you know, one that's not going to be predictable. It definitely is not. And uh, don't drink anything before you go, because you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom. Oh yeah, I am so impressed that I didn't have to get up and pee once, yeah. and you guys both got up what, and pee. I must have had a, a magical window where I didn't break the seal or something. You both. Part of the, this minutes. is this part of the review. Yes. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for joining me, my husband and my mom. Say bye. Bye.